Well, God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. I ask we continue in the grace of the Lord. Um, I want to show you something real quick. I'm going to read some scriptures in 1 Timothy around verse number 5. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 5. Glory to God for his grace. Let me show you something. Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith. From which some, having strayed, have turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. But we know that the law is good if one is uses lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person. In other words, if you've been declared righteous through the blood of Jesus, if you've been declared righteous through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, you, you've been justified, you're righteous, the law wasn't made for you. <laughs> Knowing that the law was not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly, for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers. If there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which is committed to my trust, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me because he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry if you're gonna get put into the ministry the Lord has enabled you to do so if you're gonna get put in the ministry wow what is going on over there if you're gonna get put in the ministry the Lord has to enable you to do so man that was some weird if you would have seen what I just seen Lord have mercy <laughs> you see some amazing things when you hear if you're going to be put into the ministry the Lord has to enable you to do so let me show you something else in Jesus name uh, although I was a formerly a blasphemer a persecutor and an insolent man but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief um, if you um, have achieved or gotten anywhere or if you think you have achieved something gotten anywhere by yourself and not the mercy of the Lord, then you are quite mistaken. He says, And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Now, grace is in Christ Jesus, um, faith is in Christ Jesus, and love is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Paul said, Christ Jesus came into the world to send sinners to hell. No, Christ Jesus came into the world to judge sinners. Christ Jesus came into the world. He didn't come into the world to in the bushah. He didn't come to the world to send sinners to hell. He didn't come to the world in the name of Jesus to um, blasphemy. He came into the world to save sinners. How is it that some in the church, how is it that some in certain churches can't wait to send you to hell? But he came into the world to save sinners. And Paul said, I am the chief sinner. However, for this reason, I obtained mercy. That in the mean first, Jesus Christ might show all long suffering. Jesus Christ has long suffering. You gotta watch folks who are quick to send folks to hell. Because that person has some sin in them that they just won't repent of and get out of. You ever catch somebody as always judging folks? Sure enough, they got something going on with them that they just can't get rid of. I remember this young man. I ain't got shouldn't say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. And you can find it not only in the church; you can find it in the world. You got pe people preaching against homosexuality, and they caught up in homosexuality. You got people preaching that you should do this and you should do that, and they find find themselves caught up in this, that, and the other. Now, I'm not saying that edible sha rado sokoraba that we are not to. Preach the word of God as concerning uh, sinful acts. That ain't what I'm saying. But I'm saying is when you go around the church telling everybody don't play the lottery, you're going to hell. 
And lo and behold, we find you in the lottery line. What, what is really going on? You, first, get your own self delivered first. Then perhaps you can see clearly to get somebody else delivered. I both throw cool by shit. Paul said I was the chief sinner. He's saying I was, you know, but I obtained mercy. And that in me first, Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Now the king, now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the king eternal, immortal, invisible. He came into this world to save sinners or whom I myself, Paul is long gone, so I just said myself. He came into this world to save sinners of whom I myself am chief. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I obtain mercy that the Lord would show forth in me long suffering. And so now I preach to others also that the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world not to send you to hell. He wants to He wants to save you and deliver you and set you free. That's why he died on the cross. That's because of his death, burial, and resurrection. That's where he's accomplished it. And that what he's accomplished, the only thing you got to do is believe in him. For if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has risen from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. For whosoever ever call on the name of the Lord shall not be put to shame. Listen, if it's the word, then I must have did it. And if it's not, then I wasn't with it. Stay committed.